I promise you, you will grow in your spiritual walk and the Lord will help you know exactly what to do each and every day if you'll dive into His Word. Welcome to That's a Good Word in our special study of Psalms here with Dr. Brian Spearman. Um, Dr. Spearman has been very gracious to give us this time, and we're going to, over the next few weeks, dive into the book of Psalms and really dive into some specific passages. Um, so, Dr. Spearman, thank you so much for being here. We are excited and looking forward to this, brother. Absolutely. I've been excited about it as well. Yes, sir. So, we got Psalms 1. I'll let you kind of just take it away. We'll dive right in it. Well, when you when you asked me about this, I, it was hard to take. 150 Psalms and find five of them right. to just uh, to look at, because I think the book of Psalms, to me, I think the thing I love about it most is it has every emotion in it. Every single thing that we have gone through, the psalmist talk about. And uh, the reason I wanted to look at Psalm 1, obviously, not only because it's the first one we have recorded, but the biggest reason is this is my grandma's favorite psalm. So she died in September this year at 97 years old. And, uh, you know, I, I can remember about a year ago sitting in her living room on a Friday morning and, uh, she and I were talking about Psalms and she started quoting the first song. I said, grandma, I want to get this on video. I said, you okay with that? Oh yeah, that's fine. So she sat there and she went through and she said from the beginning, she's like, this has been my favorite song. Mm -hmm. And she said, because it talks about the two ways in which we should live. And so mm -hmm. what I thought we would do today is just open up and go ahead and read the whole song. Yeah. I, I think that that's so important. And so the two ways is the heading for Psalm 1. It says, how happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. He's like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears its fruit in its season, and a leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. The wicked are not like this. Instead, they are like chafe that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand up in the day in, in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leans, leads to ruin. And I think this, this, this psalm is so perfect for us. It's a daily psalm. When we get up in the morning, you know, we have two ways we can do. We can either A, see what the Lord has for us. And I think that it's so important, you know, when you look at that very first verse there, how happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked? Mm or stand in the path with sinners, or sit in the company of mockers. And in this world that we live in, there's a lot of that going on. I mean, we have a choice of either, hey, who are we going to 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 follow? Are we going to follow him? Or are we going to follow the ways of the world? And You know, that's what I love about verse 2. He actually talks about that. And, and the psalmist says, instead, the delights in the Lord's instruction. Mm -hmm. He meditates on it day and night. And, you know, over and over and over time, even my Bible here, I've got it written down. When I, when I read that psalm and I think about 24 hours a day, the God that created us it is a God who has given us his instruction. Uh, if we want to know the instruction, we can find it right here in God's word mm -hmm. and every day. And, you know, uh, as as the longer I'm alive and the more that I try to try to study God's word, that's why it comes out during the day. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm struggling with something, it might be struggling with a battle. I might go to Ephesians 6, or if I'm struggling with something else, or if I see that God has given us some amazing thing that day, meditating on his instruction day and night. And I love the fact that he gives, uh, the psalmist there gives us a, a picture. Uh, we all know what a tree looks like beside those flowing streams, you know, and it bears fruit during the season, you know, but at the same time, it doesn't with it. You know, I love that, that whatever the Lord does with us, whatever it does, he, he's going to prosper it. That's a promise. And, um, you know, as you look through this psalm, I, I can remember, I can still, I've got the video actually on my phone of my grandma doing that. As she said, you know, she went all the way back to when she became a bully. You know what I'm saying? It's so important to be able to understand that there are two ways. There's either the ways the Lord has for us or the ways of the world. And so when you look at this, you know, it gives these promises in verse four and five. It's like the wicked are not like this. What do they do? They, they're wither up. In the end, it's going to be useless. 
It is absolutely useless. And so when you look at verse 5, therefore the wicked will not stand up in the day of judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. You know, one day we that are believers in Christ, that are truly brothers and sisters, I, I love one of the things about this translation in the CSB is so many times it'll say brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters. And uh, I was talking to my, to, to, to my church even the other day, and I said, well, here's the deal. The only ones that are brothers and sisters are those that know the Lord. They are the true family of God. I can, I can be friends with everybody, but there are really only certain brothers and sisters, and they should be like what this psalm is talking about. Because in verse 6, what does it say? It says, For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. His way is perfect in every single way. And we've got every bit of it recorded. There is nothing that we face in our life that is not recorded in Scripture on how it works. Go all the way through the Old Testament, all the way through the New Testament. And man, I'll go all the way back to Adam and Eve, right? Mm -hmm. We know that he has a plan for us. We are broken people, but we can either A, walk the way of the righteous, meditate on the Lord's word day and night, or we can go with the way of ruin. And in the end, that is not going to add up to anything at all. And so this passage of scripture is just so perfect. I mean, it's one you could read every single day. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you could really think about the fact of, hey, am I happy in the Lord? Is he my portion? Mm. Is he everything to me? And if he is, guess what? You're going to want to walk that way. You're going to want to see how he, how he helps you through the day. Right. And so I think that that is just so perfect of Psalm 1. It's just a perfect way to start out this time together as we look over the next couple of weeks at the Psalms. Yeah, absolutely. We live in a world today that tells you you can be neutral, right? You can live in the ways of the world, and also still be Christian, still live, live as a Christian. But unfortunately, the text says that that's not true. That's, that, that's not true. We have to decide. Another thing I love that you point out was that individuals, as we see in verse 3, individuals that are wicked, um, their joy withers away, right? So in, 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 in our, my experience of just... Um, even my experience as a Christian now with, with sin, there's no fulfillment in that. There's no fulfillment in living the way you want to live. And so for unbelievers, they're, they're always looking for something. And unfortunately, it's many different things, mm-hmm. right? And even in our own lives, when we struggle with sin, it's looking for fulfillment and we don't find it. The only way we can, any person, unbeliever or, or believer, can find fulfillment in this life is through Christ and through knowing the Lord, through his word. Um, and just the kind of as we're going to see all throughout Psalms, the grounding for this delight, for this happiness is who God is. And we find that in his word, like you pointed out. Absolutely. You know? And I think, you know, it's so important. I love that in verse two. That's one of the things that I've highlighted just over and over and over and over again mm-hmm. is the delight is in his instruction. I don't always have to like his instruction when I'm going through Psalms, but a lot of times that delight in his instruction, both day and night, is that means that it is always there. Right. It's always present, right? You know, I mean, in every way and shape and form, he, if we are focused on what he has for us, then guess what? We're going to be able to navigate through the life in which he has given us, whether it's a second later, whether it's a day later, whether it's a year later. If we constantly look to him for guidance, then he is going to show us the paths that we should take That's each right. and every day. That's right. And there's re- this realization here. I mean, for many Christians that might be misunderstanding, um, Christianity is not this checklist thing where you're just struggling all the time and having to do this or that. If you don't do it, you just feel horrible. And it's just like, I have to do these things and it's, I don't want to do them, but I have to do them to be a Christian. No, Christianity is that we actually delight to do the things that God wants us to do. We have a new heart. We are Christians. We want to live righteously. Of course, we still battle our flesh and we battle sin, but there is this desire to do what God wants us to do because we understand the only way we're ever going to be filled is by doing those things. And I think it's so beautiful. I mean, when you think about it, the guidance comes from the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, we we have the Holy Spirit. Those of us who uh, are alive in Christ today, we have a God. That right. God is the Holy Spirit. And they did not have that necessarily in the book of Psalms, mm-hmm. right? But at the same time, we do. Right. And so that understanding that if, if you're meditating on what he has for you day and night, and you're thinking through what he has for you every single day, time of your day, every single one of those details line up with what he has, even in the really good times and even in the 
Psalms. That's right. That's right. So getting excited to go through Psalms over these next few weeks and and learn how to honestly communicate with God, you know, and that's how, how David does. Um, so excited about this. But as we see in Psalms one, uh, like you said, there is two there are two ways. But the only way that any Christian can truly have joy, truly be happy, and truly have fulfillment is is by following the way of the righteous, by following the Lord. So absolutely. But excited about this, is there anything else you want to go? Well, I think, man, we I, I would encourage you if you're watching to take time and to start with someone. Mm-hmm. Just dive into it. Just let the Lord speak to you throughout the time as you read it and as you you think. That's right. And if there's and if there's any book that will show you and highlight God's character. I mean, it's, it's this, this one right here. So if you want to light in the Lord of who he is, this is a great place to start. So thank you, Brian. We'll be back next week and, and we'll keep diving in. Sounds great. Yes, sir.